So I saw a bunch of people on Twitter just, you know, for a week or so, like saying something, something, Captain Sonar, and they'd post a picture. And the picture they always posted was the one I just pulled up right here, and it shows, like, these little charge-up dials and a picture of a submarine. Well, like my, friend, my friend Chris, who plays Netrunner, is moving to Seattle, but is moving, like, on Wednesday and wasn't able to move before PAX. Uh, he told me about Captain Sonar, and I said, that game sounds amazing. And then yeah. we got to PAX, there it was. So we played it at PAX, and then... Just yesterday, I was in the game store for a Netrunner tournament, and I was telling, you know, we were just chatting it up before the tournament, and I yep. said, yeah, this is a great game. I played a PAX, Captain Sonar, and everyone was like, oh, that sounds awesome. And then I lost, so I had the buy in the round two. Ah. And then I walked around the store just looking around, and there Captain Sonar was for 50 bucks, and I said, well, I could buy this and we can play it, like, right the fuck after this Netrunner tournament, everybody, yeah. as long as I get Rim to pay for it. Which I did, because Scott <laughs> said, hey, they got it. And I went on Amazon, and it was $104 on Amazon. It was 50 bucks at the store, and I had store credit. So I'll charge you slightly less, because it's a used once copy of Captain But then Captain on Amazon, Sonar. while I didn't buy the Captain Sonar, I saw Fresh Fish for $38, and I saw uh, Deep Sea Adventure for like 11 So I bought both of those. Right. But yeah, so Captain Sonar, this game. So in the world of games that are co-op, right, we have a lot of problems. For example... We got pandemic, where the pandemic problem is is just basically quarterbacking. Yeah, it's like, it's, the it's, fact it's that a you solid. Are it's a solitaire game, and you just happen to unofficially divide the work between four people, and there isn't really any actual separation because you can share all the information. Yeah, and the rules are bullshit. Whatever. I'd so be more fine. Yeah, we've talked about this. You've got the traitor kind, where it's yep. bullshit because obviously the traitor is, and it then becomes pandemic. You've got. The Pandemic Legacy, I guess, slightly better than regular well, Pandemic. I haven't like, played it's it. It's more a role-playing game slash experience, which is fine. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the game puzzle-solving part is not really But well, the thing, the problem with those games is they don't have a lot of replay value by design. Yep. So. You've got the beautiful Hanabi style where you're forced not to share information. and it, Or there are strict rules around sharing information, which itself is the core of the game. Yes. You've got the real-time kind, the space alert and the XCOM, where the real-time nature of it forces you to co-op because no one can do all that work in such a short amount of time. But that real-time has to be facilitated by a third party, be it an app, a recording, or a human. Yeah, you got the versus kind where there's a Dracula, right? Fury yep. of Dracula where there's a person you're up against. So four people are co-oping against one person on teams, but Furry of Dracula has problems with the combat parts. Well, but, but that the hide genre, and seek part is good. Yeah, no, and also that genre of like a bunch of people versus one person, that's basically just facilitated gaming. And it's actually like that genre is. It's really is fine. the same as Hero Quest in some ways. Yeah. Any and that genre is fine. It's just any individual implementation of it might yeah. be good or bad. But Captain Sonar brings to the table something that is very rare, even with all the board games in the world, and that is. Team versus team. Two teams going against each other, just like football or any other sport. Four on four, real time. It's and the real four time, on four, and it's real time. But the, the, the thing is, I heard that, and I thought, that's cool. But then when I was told that not only is it four on four, real time, you do not need a facilitator. The game is self-facilitating, and there is no app or anything. Yep, it's just four on four, and that's it. And then I said, what the fuck? How do you do that? And that's because the people who made this game are brilliant. Let me tell you how this shit works. So first of all, you're paying 50 bucks, and there's not a lot of stuff in the box. You can make this game. You don't need to buy it. Yes. However, uh, I'd say buy it because, like, this game design is legit. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, the game design is legit. Also, you really want to make like some sort of shield wall to separate four people from four other people. Never mind all the boards and all the, that stuff. Plus, it, it comes with dry erase markers. They're nice, even though they're shitty. Buy replacements on Amazon. Yeah. Figure out which ones are best on Amazon. And Probably the ones you would use in an overhead uh, projector, those kind. Yeah, the, that, that kind, exactly. Yeah. Because you're writing on that transparency if you're the radio Exactly. Operator. So here's how this works each team of four is on a submarine in the water. Sploosh. There's some backstory, whatever. You, you don't like you each don't other. You don't care about that. And you, you don't like each other. You have the same map, and you say, the captains on each team say, dive, and you dive. And then the game begins once everyone dives. And here's how it works. The captain chooses any starting location on the map that's not on land, because you're a fucking submarine. Duh. Yep, so both sides, you're looking at this just map. Then... You have on each team, you have the captain. And the captain says, head north, or head east, or head south, or head west. Because it's, it's a grid. And the captain said, when you move, you have to say it loud. So everyone hears, right? Your team and the other team. So the person on the other team, they don't know where you started, but they know you just headed north. So on there, there's a radio operator. And the radio operator... This is, the, this is what really makes the game. This is brilliant. The radio operator's only job is to listen to the opponent's captain... 
and draw a line north because he headed north and then draw a line east when they head east so they know the path you took. So the radio operator is trying to figure out where the other sub is based on all this information they're overhearing. Right. And, they're, and all they do is solve the puzzle or figure it out and give the, basically consult with the captain and be like, Captain, they're either here or here. Captain, I think they're going this way. And the captain is synthesizing their information. Like, Scott, where do you think they are? I'm going to start heading north. Cool, yeah. yeah. And you're also working with engineering and all the other people. Well, we'll talk about those people in a second. Yeah. Right? But the radio operator has a transparency and a, and a map. The captain has a map that they're just drawing on where they re- literally are. And right? you can play as fast as you want. I could be like, head north, head north, head north, head north, head north. That's totally you can't, legit. You can't. You, well, until, you can't necessarily do that either. Because that was, well, you can until. No, you can't. So anyway, uh, the radio opera. I played this game recently. Let me explain it because you right. don't know. You don't know. I read the rules. You didn't read the rule book. I actually did read the rules. Oh, wow. Okay. Anyway, the radio operator has a transparency and a map that it moved the transparency around. You also can't move and bump into your own trail. It's like Tron. You can't, your, your motor, so your submarine has a laser coming out the back that's creating a wall. Yep. You cannot bump into your own wall. You can bump into the other team's wall. Yeah, because you, you, you don't even know, you don't even know where it is. Can't bump into the wall, can't bump into land. So you can't go, like, you can't go east, south, west, north. That's an illegal move because you just bumped into yourself, right? Your trail. And you can surface and make it go away, but whatever, t- that's not important. Surfacing right is super fun. We'll talk about that in a bit. So then you've got the first mate. Now, if you only have three on three, the captain is also the first mate. And what the first mate does, every time they move, they charge a system and a little bit. And they can charge all these different systems that do different things. There's the sonar and drone systems, which you can use to help find the opponent sub. Yep, there's the there's silent a, running system. The silent system, which lets you move secretly. Uh, a, a number of spaces for in any of the four directions, uh, except for backwards, because you that you'll bump into your own trail. Yep. And there's the weapon systems, the mine and the torpedo, which you can charge up. And there's an optional sixth thing for like that's weird only stuff. no, that's only on map five. Yep. The, the hardest map. There's a scenario thing that you charge up and use that does something special. But what we didn't, I never played with it. So I already read online a lot of people once they played the game a lot. They make up their own things. You have to make up your own map because. Yeah. But the, basically, you that's the spot where you can charge up something weird if you made a custom scenario. Also, the map one is the only map I've played on, and it's a baby map. We gotta yeah. gotta go to map B real quick. Yeah. Once you once you know how to play. Anyway, the the final person is the engineer, and the engineer has this picture of the submarine, kind of, and there's a main circuit and there's a, a nuclear reactor, and every time you move. There's, they have to cross off something on this sheet. Yeah, shit breaks every time you move. So if you move north, they have to pick something in the north rectangle and remove it. Either something in the reactor or something in the main circuit. And now let's say they remove like the weapon system in the north area. Well, you can't use your weapon systems. Yep, so you get into situations where if the captain's not paying attention, I'll be like, halt, fire a torpedo, and they're like, nope. Now, some of the things in the main circuit are connected to each other. So if you hit all four things that are connected to each other by a line, they all clear. So you can go north, 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 east, and those are all connected to each other. So if you do north, 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 east, those all then get erased, and now you're good to use uh, some sort of equipment, right? One of the things that the first mate is charging up. You can also clear off your reactor things, but those are permanently removed yep. until you surface. So good luck with that. And if you fuck up, your sub just you, takes damage. If you cross off every... Let's, your north area on your little sheet only has so many circle bits. If you cross all of them off 100%, you take damage. And your submarine only has four hit points and can never be healed. And the best part is the captain just gives orders. So if the captain says go north, like once you say it, and the, se- the no. guy says... Hmm? Yeah, after the captain says north, south, east, or west... Both of the people next to him, the engineer and the first mate, have to say, okay. Yep. If they don't say, okay, you didn't move yet, really. Yep. And uh, if they don't say, okay, you can't move again yet, right? So if you're like, head north, and you don't hear two okays, then you didn't really move north, and you now have to discuss with them, why didn't we move north, engineer? Yep. The engine's busted. We can't move north. <laughs> <laughs> you blew us up. We're yeah. dead. We're, we, got it. we can only move this direction. Uh, uh-oh. So you get a lot of chatter. Like, I was the captain in the one game I played, and I kept yelling engineering, like, hey, how much leeway do I have in the east? And they'd be like, not a lot, captain. <laughs> what yeah. do you need me to do to heal stuff? To go like this. As I'm looking at where Scott's telling me to go, and I'm looking at where engineering's telling me to go, in the opposite directions. So every time I played, the, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the rules of exactly how everything yeah, works, yeah. but the, every time I played this so far, which is three times, 
it's everyone sort of used the same strategy, which I now only at the end of the third game I realized might not be the best strategy. I'm curious what you're gonna say there because I came up with what I think is a decent mm. strategy. Well, also your strategies are different because on map A it's really easy to figure out where people are because there's so many islands. Yep. On the harder maps, there's a lot less islands. It's a lot harder to they could be anywhere, right? But basically. We were playing such that we were moving fast, as fast as we could. Because moving is the only way to charge stuff up. Right, charging all kinds of stuff up, and then trying to f use the sonar and, and drone systems to find the opponent. We found them easily because the map has a lot of islands on it. Yep. And they were moving a lot. When someone moves a lot, it's easy to find them because they have a big old trail that only fits in certain places on the map. If they have a little trail... It's hard. It could be anywhere. Well, funny, we both, in the first game, both subs kind of went near each other and tried to put mines in basically the same place. Yeah. Uh, but mines don't set off when someone goes near them. They set off remote, their remote-triggered mines. The head captain raises his hand and is like, we're detonating the mine. At this location. Are, I, you, are you near it? Yeah, we're near it. Shit. Or, oh, no, we're nowhere near there. Yeah, and if you detonate it near yourself, well... Yeah, you can hurt yourself. Anyway, yeah. um... So yeah, so we everyone moved fast, found each other quickly, and then it was pretty much just a race to see who could shoot the other uh, submarine with torpedoes first. And I've won all three games I've played. <laughs> but I think a better move is to move a little bit. Charge up some stuff and then just silent. Just sit there. Yeah, put mines out, you know. In, in make sure that you move slowly so they can't find you. You know, use silence a lot. Like, drop a mine, silence. Drop yeah. a mine, silence. And move a little bit and be really mysterious and stealthy. And then, like, surface, because they have no clue where you are, so you can surface safely. When you surface, they know what sector you're in, and then right after you're done surfacing, silence, move, yeah. above, right? They can't, you know, and leave so many mines around, right? And then the radio operator will be like, Captain, I think they're near one of our mines, and set it off. And this way, you can't really get torpedoed. It's hard for them to find you. Right, and you just didn't make your your sub harder to find than their sub. But then, and you, even if they do the same thing as you, you just had to do it better. But then you do run the risk because if you're moving more slowly, meaning you have more time to consult and like come up with the strategy, the other sub has the exact same opportunity now. Yep. If you suddenly start moving fast, they got to keep up. Like if you're the radio operator and you like you flub it or you fuck it up, your sub's in a lot of trouble now. Maybe. Maybe not. You know, even if you fuck up a little bit, usually you can get still really figure out yeah. where they are and get. There is one close. mechanic that I think is super fun. Where if you surface, the, the there's a task you have to do. The rule for your sub. Oh right. Is this is cool? Pencils down. Yeah. So, so if Scott's the radio operator and I surface as the captain, the other sub's moving and Scott's not allowed to write anything down. I thought you are allowed to keep tracking. You can listen to it, but his pencils down. I didn't read that in the rule book. That's I'll, how I'll the facilitator who taught us the game was very specific. Everyone has to put their pencil down until everyone completes their task. I don't remember. I've never put my pencil down while the except for while doing the thing. Anyway, yeah. so when you surface, the engineer takes on their sheet at the top is a picture of a submarine with four sections. And that each section has a white outline. And you have to draw in that white outline. Without touching the edges. Without touching the edges. Sort of like, um, you know, one of those games where you have like a metal ring on a stick and you're trying to move it around the wire without touching the wire. Yep. And then you initial it. And your whole team has to initial a section each. If you have three players, someone does two sections. Then you show this to the enemy engineer. They look at it and verify it that you did it properly without messing up. And if they say you did a good job, because they shouldn't be assholes and say you did a bad job when you didn't actually mess up, then they say, okay, and now you can say dive and play again. Yep. Uh, but the other sub can keep doing stuff while you finish the Unless task. they're also trying to surface. But yep. yeah, and they know what sec you have to announce what sector you're servicing in, but you don't announce your exact location. So it's not like you're just dead. Uh, plus, you hopefully do this when they're far away and can't really do anything to you. Yep, surface like in the first game we played, the other sub was forced to surface because they had a bunch of breakdowns. Well, it's like they can't. You can't go back on your snake, right? So let's say, for example, you go like south, east, south, west. Now you can't go north and you can't go east, and maybe there's an island to your south. You can only go west again, but maybe you're out of west. So your choice is to go west and damage yourself or surface. Right? And maybe you already have three damage. You can't go west and damage yourself. You have to surface. Servicing team no cannot use their pens for anything. That's new. That's new. Okay. So well, so when I played it the first time, because well, you were doing the radio operators. You I, kept, I kept radio operating when we were serving. We oh, were... you were cheating then. Oh, no, wait. We didn't surface ever. Yeah, we never surfaced. They were fine. Oh, but yesterday when we played. I... Yeah. <laughs> so they surfaced, and I looked at my engineer, because they'd played the game a bunch already, and, <laughs> and I was like, 
should we go for it? And they were like, go. And I was like, north, north, east. We were just like moved as fast as well, we could. Well, to charge a torpedo, you only needed three movements. So we went move, 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 shoot. Move, yeah. move, move, shoot. Done. Because we, we move knew, a whole it bunch. Had, it only hurt them because we knew exactly the spot they were on. We had shot them. Then they started surfacing. Then we just went move, 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 shoot, and they were dead. Yep, we moved as fast as we could. But they didn't want to surface. They just had no choice. You want to surface when no one can know where you are. Yep. Exactly. Or so, if the other ones also surfaced, then I guess you can get away with it for a little while. Maybe. I think the really the only flaw in this game is that I think it can be fucked up. You can get it messed up if like you can't, you know, some sort of miscommunications or right because no one's like watching you and verifying you only charge the right number. Yep, of Yeah, like you could just cheat, but a clever person would notice. Right. And the game really requires everyone to be in the spirit of let's not cheat, guys. Right. And it, you know you can't like just say no when they drew the outline properly. Yeah. You know stuff like that. Uh, you know, but it's like if you're going fast, there's a lot of opportunity for mistakes. You need a lot of discipline. And I think the way I would get around that is, irrespective of how the rules are actually written, when I teach it to people. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna use a very specific lexicon and require it of everyone, mm -hmm. just to make it clear. And I think it's something like when the captain wants to move, they have to say like set a course north. No, it actually says in the rule book you have to say head north. Head north. That's what it says in the rule book. Yeah, I'm saying you must say head, head, head is north. Enough. I think head is enough. You just don't say it more than once. And yeah. the other people have to say the rule book is very explicit about this. We just weren't told that the one time we played at PAX. I read the rule book yesterday. Yep. It's very explicit. You must say head north. If you just say north. And it doesn't mean shit. You have to say head north, yep. and your engineer and first mate have to say okay. Otherwise, you didn't move anywhere. All right, that's yep. it's super explicit. You don't need to. Modify but what he it. also said uh, to me after we were talking about the game, because actually I told him my idea of say set a course instead, and he said that's way better yeah. because he's, they, he said that they ran into that problem a lot. Yeah, because they didn't tell people to say head. They said just well, no, people. We were he, just playing like north, north, east. No, he and said no one it was said there was any because, problem with that. Partly because a lot of the people who played were kind of mumbly nerds. That's also a problem. You, you have to be loud and clear. But the other suggestion right? that he had that he said worked really well, if you didn't want to make it a longer phrase to make it very explicit, was to have a rule to tell the group the captain has to look at the radio operator and like point at them or make some gesture when they say it. Yeah, you know, some, you know whatever you can do, right? Yeah, it doesn't, it in, doesn't really matter. And just be, as long as you're 100% consistent, the, the, then the other team has no excuse. It if they effectively fuck it up. doesn't matter, but the rule book isn't flawed. The rule book is no, very no, no. explicit. No, the rule book is fine. And, you know, you just have to be absolutely clear of when you move. And versus when someone is just like saying the word north for some other reason because they're discussing where should we yep. move. Like, should we move west? Yeah, I think we should move west. If the other team accidentally thinks you moved west, then. Now, another guy I, I was talking to in the room after we played the first time, they were at PAX. They were, they were talking about how in a previous game, the other sub stopped moving mm -hmm. and the captain started talking to the radio operator about a plan. So he just jotted down their plan because he was listening as the radio operator. Right, no. See, I mean, so that's. When you play the game the first few times, right? You're playing basically baby mode, but yep. you're not actually playing baby mode rules other than the other than the map. Yeah, don't play the baby actual baby mode. Everyone says it's just the not turn based good. mode doesn't exist. Yep. Don't look on the other side of your map. The there's turn based no, mode is nothing like there. it's like that CD in D and D third edition right. when it came out. When we played, basically, if the radio operators like got something wrong on the path, we would stop and like have the captain like reiterate the path they took so that they could correct the radio operator's map, right? Yep. But in reality. When you play this game for serious with eight people who know what they're doing, you don't do that shit, right? The yep. radio operator is you're role playing the existence of like a real radio. So you're system. under stress if the other like, team's moving some, fast and the captain's yelling at you. You like miss an order, and well, that sucks, right? Or like so, you know, a radio isn't always loud and clear, right? You might not know, you know, get everything coming in clearly, right? When you put your pencil down to surface, you might not remember everything. So you're you, you know you have to find them despite the radio not being perfect. Yeah, and that aspect of it actually the radio operator you have to role. find a, but you have to find a balance between it's bullshit you were being quiet we couldn't yep. hear you you're just trying to scam the radio operator and no we actually don't want this to absolutely be perfect it, which is there easily, should be some noise on and interference on the radios yep. and jamming and whatnot but it's easily solved by Encryption. just following the rules explicitly and you know loud and clear voice and use the specific right terminology that is required of you for your role. The flaw in this game is it's hard to get eight competent people in one place who are dedicated and will if you can get those eight people, you, why, why aren't you playing a tabletop RPG? You can get away with well one, this takes way less time than a tabletop RPG. It does and it takes less preparation but and you still need eight quality the four, the people. The four roles, right? 
The radio operator is the hardest and the most stressful. They can't do anything else. Yeah. The captain is the second hardest because you might just kill everybody. Like, it's your fault if Mm -hmm. you mess up. The other two roles are way easier. They're still fun. They're like, they're not like the game is set up to where, let's say you played a bunch of times. The first mate is definitely the easiest job because all the first mate does is basically charge up systems. But the first mate, I think the reason that the first mate exists and has such a simple job is that they can do a lot of the thinking. Right, yep. there's a, it's part of the role playing part is you know of actually being like, in a submarine. Captain, that, we're, mines are charged. You right, can the, place them somewhere. Right, the first mate advises the captain and like thinks you know because you need the captain is so harried dealing with all this shit coming right at them that you need that one job that's light so that that person can sort of you know help with you know what's going on. In fact, in our game, our my first mate was actually consulting with engineering Mm -hmm. and then he was actually talking to me so engineering didn't talk to me except when i gave you know go ahead north okay yeah because otherwise he was dealing with his own shit of trying to figure out a course so they they would like they 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 worked out a system with it It but since this game is real time there is no requirement whatsoever for the pace at which you move you could just not move and just like get up, get with your team and put your heads together and huddle and discuss things for like minutes if you yeah. want and then suddenly the, like say both subs are quietly like remember remember i mean you're and mer- then one sub's like head north and then all shit breaks out right it's like suddenly you have to pay attention to them yeah but, like you might just be quietly discussing things and not even moving and then the other team is like stop because whenever you use an ability, you have to stop the game. I think you say halt. Yeah, you say stop, halt, whatever. And then they're like, stop. We're firing a torpedo at I-9. And it's like, oh, shit. How did you know? <laughs> we didn't even move. How did you know? <laughs> but because there's there's sort of four levels of roles, two stressful ones and two much less stressful, like way less stressful. The engineering one is slightly stressful. Yeah. Well, especially because the captain might not listen to you if you're like, Captain, we can't go east anymore. And yeah. then the captain's like, head east again. You're like, well... The first mate is the easy job. Yeah. But it's good because say you play the game three times in a row, like you're at a, you're like hanging out change, for a night. Change up the roles. Change up yeah. the teams. Because after, if you do the captain and then the radio operator, your brain needs a break. Like yeah. this game is like... I'm not kidding. The you game don't want to be stressful. the radio operator again. You just no. want to go be the first mate. Now. I would not want to be the captain two times in a row. That shit is real hard. Yep. But so yeah, the- uh, if you got, if you're the kind of person who plays tabletop games, has a big enough table, and has eight people, this is a must buy game, even at the retail price of fifty dollars. If you are a gaming, a tabletop gaming convention, if you are a convention or a library of games, this is a must get game yep. in your library. If you're a, if you go to meetups or you know, must get game because this is a game where I think most people will only experience it at conventions. Like you go to PAX, someone comes over to the table and says, "Hey, we're playing this. I got it from the library." Yep. Uh, I'd like to play it like uh, you know on more harder maps and you know more. You know what I'd like to see more time on it. This should be the first round of the Omegathon finale at PAX or the Omegathon at PAX East. Yeah, you could have a bunch of games and just all the winning teams continue and all the losing because you can divide any multiple of four people in yep. half by using this game. And because the game mechanics are so streamlined and simple, the game is ripe for modding. Like if you play this game to the point that like. You've all memorized the engineering so you know movement patterns to clear stuff and you're like super A game. Mm-hmm. Just modify it because it doesn't matter. It's not like it's secret. You just both teams agree like let's make up a mod. You make a mod, you do something with the scenario and then you just play that map. I mean you just make new maps really and that yeah. that makes it exciting enough just changing the map. Like make a map where there's a nuke or something you or a make mission. A, you can make a bigger map. You could make a smaller map. You could make, yeah. you know, something else. You could You make- could even use this say you're if you were playing like a naval RPG or some nonsense. You there's can a map, use this as a, ma- a subgame. There's a map that comes with it that where all the water is ice and you can only surface in certain parts. And if you surface under the ice and smash into it, you take damage. Yeah. Right? It's like you just come up with something like that. Like, oh, there's a, you know, everyone has a boat that also, you can just go crazy. Or you've both got intelligence. You've got to get to a port on the opposite side. Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. But that would be you can't. I don't think you can have a victory condition besides finding the other sub. Because I think yeah, I think you could. It would end. But you just go to the other side and win. Be like all right, game over. Yeah, but maybe, yeah. So I know they're doing that. So I, I I go over to the other side. Like there's one port on a square, and I put a mine. How there. do you know? That, yeah. Well, how do you know when they're there? It's like you know. Well, I hear them moving. If one mine doesn't kill them either. Yeah, I'm there too. Well, I'm gonna wait. I I think you have to always. The objective always has to be the hide and seek. There are ways to play this game once you've played it out. 
you can just mod it forever because this it's is gonna have expansions added. for sure. It's, yeah, the expansion is gonna come with like more boards yep. and like replacement boards and all sorts of stuff. It's definitely coming. This was probably the most surprising game to me at all of PAX. The Did thing we play- is, you're spending fifty bucks though for a bunch of cardboard boards that are really thin and you you can dry erase on them. Two transparency sheets. Uh, some thick boards that just have sort of artwork on them that you use to separate your team from the other team. Yep. And a pile of crappy dry erase markers that the racers built in that are really shitty, but they get the job done. That's all yep. you're getting, in, and the rule book. That's all you're getting. You are not getting anything else in this box. Which, like I said, I'm fine with in this case. It's a really big box, too. Rebox this shit. Yeah. We, well, the funny thing is, this PAX, for whatever reason, at PAX West, we played a lot of co-op-y games and a lot of shared space games, like way more than ever. This was one of many, and we'll be talking about them, but this one, this was my favorite game I had not yet played at PAX. And the thing is, my second favorite one is Deep Sea Adventure, which is also about a submarine. But it's not co op No. It's, it, well, a, it's, it is, it's, uh, it's infiltration, it's co- What's it's the infiltration opposite of co-op? light. Yeah, it's the opposite of co-op. Competitive? No, but you share a space... And you're just fucking each other in that space. I mean, you share a space in T&E and you're fucking each other in that space. Yeah, it's but this, that one, you're sharing oxygen. And if you go deep, sure. well, that, that game we'll talk about in a future show. It's super good. It's super cheap. All just right. buy it. So any, everyone with friends get Captain Sonar. Everyone without friends who can't play Captain Sonar cry. I am definitely bringing Captain Sonar to MAGFest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It might be the only Captain Sonar at MAGFest. <gasps> yeah, that MAGFest, especially because we got the Swede, we're, we're going to play a lot of Captain Sonar, I think, at MAGFest. Because oh, yeah. once people know how to play it, like, I can walk away, and they'll just play it. I think it'll be continuous. I don't want to walk away. I want people to play it so yeah. I can play it. <laughs> but I think we're going to have more than eight people who want to play it. Well, that's their problem. We go to Scott. We got to form the all-pro team at MAGFest. <laughs> oh, oh, you want to make a submarine? That's An like, invincible submarine. It's like me, you, two smart people. Yeah. <laughs> like you, me, you, Alex, Pete. Like, that's unbeatable. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Johnson could be good, too. Uh, Maybe. I think it'd be good. You're about to disparage Scott Johnson. I mean... The thing is, while Scott Johnson might be okay at this game, especially if this is Team Scott, uh, how fun would it be to blow up the submarine with Captain Scott Johnson on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so something you know what we want to do. You know what he does in Overwatch? So if someone's in a group, like you can join, like we can group up and join games together. But say someone else is already in a group or already in a game, you can just join that game as a spectator. And in the next game or when someone quits, it puts you on the opposite side. So you can see Scott Johnson playing... And join his game and kill him. Uh huh. It's he's been doing that a lot, and it's really funny. Like I'll be playing, and suddenly I get killed by Scott. I'm like, Scott's in this game? You son of a bitch! Mm-hmm. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. 